eight hardmen who wouldn't last five minutes today, from musket to red card Roy. They say the game is gone. Football has been edited to such an extent that the foundations of the sport are no longer there. Rules have come in to safeguard players and make our game fair, but in doing so, it has lost its soul. That's the claim, anyway. We can only look back at the halcyon years of elbows and crunching tackles with fondness, as they wouldn't be allowed in football today. Here we take a look at some biggest nastiest SOBS to ever grace the pitch, those who would stand no chance in the modern era, owing to our soft rules. Kevin Musket played for the likes of Wolves and Crystal Palace during the late 90s and early noughties, it was with the Midlands club that he solidified his reputation as a hard man. The Crawley-born player was sent off 12 times during his playing career, for reasons including puncturing Craig Bellamy's kneecap and putting in a tackle that could have seen Matty Holmes' leg need to be cut off. In today's era, it would be more than likely that he would struggle to play half the games in a season because his aggression would see referees give him his marching orders more often than not. Do you think we have missed anyone out? Let us know in the comments section below Roy McDonough, fondly known as Red Card Roy, is another who was sent off a plethora of times even back in the olden times. Well, by old we mean the 1980s, a period where McDonough, a former Colchester and Southend striker, racked 22 red cards, a number widely considered the record. McDonough managed to find the net 144 times during his career, but for some reason, that's not what he's most famous for. Roy Keane certainly rustled a few feathers during his time at Manchester United. The midfielder was so tough that he even frightened his own teammates. Former United left-back Gabriel Hines once said, We lost a game and I went in the dressing room first and Roy Keane was second. I like to go first after the game. I didn't want to speak to anyone as we lost. I didn't understand English, just the bad words. I heard my name and F off by Roy Keane, the best player. I knew that was bad, so I stood up to him, this idol of Manchester, this great guy who everyone loved, and replied, F off, you. I don't remember what happened next. To be honest, we can't see Keane's methods working in the game today. Patrick Vieira personified Arsenal during their golden era under Arsene Wenger. But the Frenchman was much more than being a serial Premier League champion. He was by no means shy in his combative, no-nonsense style soon earned him the captain's armband. His scuffle with Keane in the tunnel will go down in Premier League folklore, while his eight red cards is a sizable tally. The former Gunners player has surely had to rein it in a bit as manager of Crystal Palace. Julian Dix enjoyed his best years at West Ham, where he became something of a cult hero for his warlike style on the pitch. His temperament and ability earned him a move to Liverpool, with the Reds' then-manager Graham soon as claiming that Dix was my kind of player. But Dix soon returned to Upton Park for another five-year spell. It was during this stint that he shaved off his hair and was nicknamed the Terminator. Despite being small in size, Dennis Wise was one of the nastiest players of the Premier League era. Indeed, for the Chelsea star, his height did not put him off getting into the opposition's faces. Before featuring an I'm a celebrity get me out of here, the former midfielder said, I'll say what I need to say, if I think it's right, and I think it's wrong, and if they agree with me great, if they don't then so be it. I will have my own opinions about things. But I'll go with the flow. Fans of the show celebrated his departure, while he had been accused of bullying fellow contestant Ian Lee. Vinnie Jones has become synonymous with the crazy gang, Wimbledon's FA Cup winners in the 1987-88 season. Jones was such a hard man that he was even plucked for a starring role playing an enforcer in 1998's Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. The iconic photo he shares with Paul Gascoigne is a stark reminder of the legacy Jones leaves behind and just what players could get away with back in the day. As a Newcastle free kick was being taken, I didn't want Gaza to move forward towards the ball Jones explained to the mirror. As we're jostling, he suddenly said to me, you're earning your 100 pounds today. It was meant as an insult, so I just grabbed him by the you know wats, and it was spot on. There was no messing. It was straight on the button and I didn't let go. Surely VAR would have had him off today. Stuart Pierce was named psycho because he behaved just like one. It's said that former Coventry boss Bobby Gould saw him toss an opposition winger into the crowd within five minutes of analyzing the defender. The wingback was honed by the late, great, Brian Clough at Nottingham Forest, where he flourished. His never-say-die attitude sometimes transpired into reckless tackles and bookings, but he endeared fans with his guile. He once refused to quit at halftime during a match for the Hammers despite having a fractured leg.